what's up we're in the next pod please go check out the previous pods to gauge your your bearings i'm gonna be a little bit more serious this time around less singing i had to encourage myself somehow because i'm having a really hard time at present doing much okay my computer is just so slow like i don't understand anyway whatever um moving on y'all would, would know if at all you watched the first part i'm busy speaking about something dire that's coming to america but i want to give you context and understanding so you can under gauge why it is that america in totality is being judged uh i at some there was a time when i was like but what about the body of christ over there to god what about the body of christ in that environment and from what i'm seeing and what i'm understanding from what the lord is showing me i guess they're just like south africa it's a game it's a joke it's a sham they're not real they're not legit and on top of that those that are legit are not able to come up for air they're suffocating just like me the body of christ in america is suffocating like me it's like south africa that way and nobody sees it nobody gauges it nobody knows a lot of people are covering alleged persecution of christians all over the world but those that are actually experiencing it firsthand are marginalized and ignored in ways that make it such that it's hard for them to do anything just like me i'm desperately trying to get out of south africa and from what the lord showed me there is a similar cause or plight or sorrow in america by american true christians because they feel like there's nowhere to turn anymore like it's just so dark that they, they just can't so whatever it is that we are seeing in the media uh and also in youtube i guess social media and mainstream in a lot of what it is that people are lamenting are uh, their challenges is just a it's not even like a percent it's it's worse what i'm trying to explain is that the situation there is worse than what it is that we are making observations of on the ground it's a lot worse and the situation is similar to south africa the situation is similar to south africa in my country nobody thinks that christians are persecuted i am have not been able i have not been able to get help or um recognition as one who is suffering persecuted as a christian because nobody even believes that i'm suffer i'm persecuted nobody is about to accept that south africa is a christian persecuting country and that's apparently what's going on in america so when i asked the lord but what about the christians over there it's like he wags his head on some they're like you they're like you they they want to get out they can't they've been smothered stymied suffocated they've been exsanguinated their blood has been drunk as like vampires and they are scantily sparsely scattered across the country to a point where it's like i could literally count the well i mean of course not literally but i'm using it metaphorically on my 10 fingers and toes the way that there's so few of them the real ones my actual true servants they are so few that i could practically count them on my 10 fingers and toes but it doesn't look that way the only reason why america just like south africa is losing a spiritual war is because my my children are scattered like sheep without a shepherd they are scattered like sheep without a shepherd and they can't even speak just like you it is a south africa volume 2.0 or south africa is america volume 2.0 i don't know what you want to call it but the situation is bad and so therefore from what the lord showed me that is the reason why he is allowing judgment it is written in god's word about why is this doing this to me why is everything so slow i think maybe i should just close this one application uh, uh now why is my mouse not responding um uh, why am i losing my bearings you see i was distracted by whatever's going on in my computer on my computer laptops yes i remember it. it's written in god's word that when uh, when god has basically judged the land and when he's done and finished and clar with it he will grab daniel job and noah i believe if they're in that land he will take them out and still judge that land and he will not give that land mercy because he's that upset with them he will take just the righteous and judge everyone rather than spare that whole country for the sake of the righteous he will spare just the righteous he will take them out he will extract them there will be a way of taking them out and then everybody else 
will be judged. The whole thing will, will fall apart. That's what happens when God is done with an environment. And from what I see and from what the Lord has been showing me for the past couple of months, alongside this morning's, um, what is this? What I woke up to understand this morning, Christ, uh, he's done like with the US, like done. I'm out here trying to lament about South Africa. Uh, just about two or three days ago, I spoke about how it is that America is done for if at all, uh, what is this? If they don't wake up and realize that the leftist politics there are destroying the country altogether and that if they don't get donald trump back in office they they don't stand a chance even in the slightest because he's the best candidate for now the only one that's running that makes any feasible sense for america i did that i did i did a video of that nature and i'm not even scared or shy to say that because a lot of uh, christians have in america in particular have resorted to saying that no we don't worship trump trump is not god we must look to Jesus and not so much, uh, what is this, Donald Trump, but Donald Trump and what it is that he represents for America and the hatred of Donald Trump in America is evidence of American heart and American sentiment because he has been attempting in his politics to revert to the America that is the original one that all of us know and love. And he is regarded as bigoted, racist, and all different kinds of weird stuff for feeling that way. And that sentiment that he has, that is Donald Trump, is the sentiment of God over America. Go back to your first love. Go back to the way you used to be. Go back to basic, basic principles. The man is not godly, yet he's not saved. But he's very much like a pharaoh to Joseph. A person that can get all of Egypt saved because he listened to a prophet, if you know what I mean. He's like King Cyrus or even Constantine. In Rome that ended Christian persecution or Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon that awarded some of the Hebrews benefits in Babylon because their God was revealed as the one true God because their God was able to interpret dreams or show them understanding illumination or anything of that nature so a pagan king so he's not God neither is he godly however he is enabling the cause or the agenda of God's people on the ground and the sentiment the, the 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 collective sentiment of america against him that is maintained in this state even after four years of the disasters that biden has endured america through any sentiment the sentiment in the country that is still very anti-trump is from what the lord showed me an understood and a comprehended and an embraced and an adored rebellion they are just rebellious it's not like they don't see what's happened they're just sticking to their guns and hoping that something different will come out of the next election and so therefore whatever happens with this next election will determine whatever happens to america at large because the rebellion of the wicked in that country is such that god is not going to suffer it any longer because they are prospering to groove their fingernails into the fabrics of global societies never mind just american so the situation is real alive dire and extreme I will use my own situation to explain to you why I say the situation in America is extreme. And, and besides, it's not even, this isn't, I'm not sitting out here basically speculating politically. I'm not doing a political analysis of America. I am out here rocking up as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, sharing what Christ has shown me about what's coming to America. He's been showing me for a while, but just this morning I woke up to hear refugees scattered all across the world that are American. My own story, so you can understand where I'm coming from. This ain't about Donald Trump. This is about the rebellion of the American people. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. Their rebellion against what is obviously some like someone that has been raised up by Jesus, by God himself, to, to as an olive branch to a country, as, as a, a way out of impending destruction. And he has been spat on and rejected. And even though the country is split right down the center between conservatives and liberals, this is what I'm getting at. There are conservatives in America that have peed God off. Like they have peed God off, like in the worst way. There are conservatives in America that albeit holding fast to conservative principles because they just want their good old fashioned country. They want their good old fashioned country back in ways that are still very anti-God and still very unserving of the planet given that I guess God has made them like the father of the earth, like the parent of the earth. The country is a global superpower and the, the uppermost one out of all of them. There are conservatives in the US that have irritated, annoyed, absolutely angered God. Meaning that the percentage of Americans that are currently grieving God is so high 
that rather than spare the land, the Lord is prepared to exa extract whoever will listen to his voice to get out, pack up and go in order to finish that whole country off for the sake of doing what I would imagine is one last home call to the globe because of people all of a sudden being enabled to now speak to whoever they will speak to, to their countries. So let me tell my own story then in having stated that. Well, it's not a story. Like, don't anticipate I'm going to be here for like ever in a day. Uh, it's just a brief outline. When I came back on social media just a couple of, um, like just two and a half, three years ago, I started, I guess I started, up, I basically started again from scratch. All of my old content, I privatized it. And I told myself, I'm starting from scratch, a clean slate. I want to grow a channel. I want to reach people for Christ. And I am, of course, focused on my own country because there is a gangrene in the country that is spreading. That is South Africa, that is. There is a, a cancer spreading in this country and it's metastasizing really badly. People are dying. Uh, there's an epidemic of sorcery. It's destroying the lives of witches. It's destroying the lives of their victims. Uh, never mind just sorcery, but just a spiritual decay. Like people are not really consecrated to God. And they are not enough from what I see. Heck no. Heck no. Like, as uh, Christian South African YouTubers, Oscar, please don't come joke with me. Don't come tell me jokes. I do not know anybody so far that I have found that is telling these prophecies about South Africa. I just say, it's like, where are they? Where are they? And I'm certain they are non existent. I'm certain that they, I'm certain that they're not non existent because in any given ecosystem, if God has got a hard cry, he will raise up people, prophets, prophetesses. And they will speak a message. They will speak a message. Think now, for instance, about America. There are so many lay J's and Joes in the country. Like lots, guys. A lot of them. There are a whole bunch of lay Joes and lay Janes in the US that are busy prophesying the very same thing that I'm saying right now. They're busy prophesying. They're saying, hey, judgment is coming to America if she doesn't repent. Judgment is coming to America if she doesn't repent. Judgment. And these people are, like I said, lay J's, lay Joes. They're just people with small little YouTube channels, background. You see, you know, some cat in the back, a, a curtain, yana, some kids playing, not an, uh, a professional videographer. It's not somebody that has like a whole studio and a YouTube ministry that is all established and everything. They're not pastors. They're not preachers. They're not anything. Just people who get dreams and they have been sharing. Hey, 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 no no they've been sharing their sentiment not sentiment sorry but their dreams and whatnot lots and lots of them guys as in for years that this has been going on a lot of americans have been sharing what it is that god is showing them is coming to their country and i sitting all the way in south africa have seen them sitting all the way in south africa have seen these chicks and these dudes all of these people that are busy talking about their country and god throwing it away basically They've been prophesying it. They've been saying judgment is coming to America. Destruction is coming to America. I've seen this. I've seen that. Yeah. Lay Jones, Lay Janes. Alongside, um, there, there also then is or are YouTube channels that are American that are quite established. They're entrenched. They've got studios. They're big. They've got massive followership, etc. All that jazz. In other words, all of their messages are being heard. They're being pushed even though there is censorship against Christians per se, but like there is not at the height that those among us that are like that across the world are being censored. So lots and lots of little prophets are popping out of America. And indeed, just as it is written in God's word in Joel and the acts of the apostles, that the Lord is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh and people will dream dreams and prophesy across the world, guys, not just in America. Okay. Yeah. God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh and people are going to dream dreams, prophesy. I've seen Americans prophesying, Janes and Joes that are quite regular, nothing spectacular, nothing hectic, sharing their dreams, only one or two videos on their YouTube channels just to share the stuff. And I've found them sitting in South Africa. The algorithms have pushed it to me and I've been listening. Are you seriously going to tell me that God, when there is all of this spiritual oppression in South Africa, is not similarly raising up a whole bunch of South Africans? Telling them, your country's in danger, your country's in trouble. Shout the alarm. Ring the siren. Get on a rooftop and ululate. Tell them what is coming. Are you going to tell me that the Lord is only interested in warning America of the judgment coming to it, but not South Africa, not Botswana, not Ghana, not Uganda, nowhere else? Why am I hearing the prophecies of just America when I'm sitting in South Africa? I don't discriminate, guys, when it comes to watching content 
on YouTube across countries. And so far as I can understand it in English or read some subtitles, I'm checking it out if it's from Christ, if it's Christian, because I'm interested in understanding what's happening across the world in a lot of the faith. All right. And yet I am being pushed down my throat a lot of American information, a lot of American content. Almost every video I click on, I hear that accent, that American accent. It's somebody from there. And I'm happy to listen to what they have to say because I'm happy to listen to what any Christian has to say. I want to know what God is showing people. I'm very interested in dreams and visions that way. I really, really want to hear what God is showing people. And if I can hear enough of the same prophecies across multiple people, more so am I convicted that this thing is from God. Okay. He is establishing a matter between two or three witnesses. Stuff like that. Why am I not hearing God's siren of warnings to Argentinians, to South Africans? As a South African, at least I should be getting a whole bunch of South African content pushed to me that is Christian. Why am I not hearing what God is saying to Brazil? Why am I not hearing what God is saying to Colombia? Why am I not hearing what God is saying to China, to India? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Is, Ch is YouTube available in China? The way that they so control information over there, I seriously doubt it, but you get my point. Whatever countries it is, where it is that YouTube can be aired and TikTok and whatever. Why am I not happening upon these prophecies? from all across the world. I should have access to that information. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. That the empowerment, according to God's word in the book of Daniel, knowledge will increase in the last days, uh, including prophecies being unfolded and people dreaming, like people come online and they share their experiences as to what's going on. I should be able to hear like Christian testimonies as prophets are prophesying over especially their own countries because that's usually what god does he will raise up a prophet against their own country to prophesy over their own nation largely largely and i i find it scathing to hear american men and women prophesying over south africa and that's all that's prophesying over south africa they're the only ones god showed me this about south africa god showed me that and even when they they say that god showed me this about south africa some of them i can stand with vouch for because they they make sense because it's the same sentiment that i share so i imagine them legit but others are just too optimistic in ways that i'm not because how in the world when i see all this darkness in my country are they seeing a future of like proper like the, it, it's like they don't like guys it's bad in south africa right now it's really bad like it is chaotic it's a cesspool of darkness and no one is it is prophesying over it Be that, is, that is believably of god the only people prophesying over this country are these charlatans all over the show abu bishi bushiri etc people that have gathered for themselves a whole bunch of numbers just by doing signs and wonders etc labantu there are prophets in this country there are prophets in literally every single country on the earth littered across lands warning lands god is into admonition god is into warning the lord does not just let people fall apart without letting them know he also says in his own word that i will not do anything before i warn or i tell my servants the prophets so given that when you are south african you grew up in this country you understand its landscape if at all you're interested keen intrigued you might even understand its politics you understand uh, its dynamics its demographics why would the Lord, with you having that extra knowledge and so therefore ability to be able to grapple a, a prophecy when it's given you about your country, why would he withhold from speaking prophecies into people living in a country that they understand, but rather chooses some foreign prophet to come and speak over a country that that individual foreign prophet might not be that learned in the dynamics of. Largely, the Lord will raise up prophets from within the country because people in the country understand their own issues. They understand their own political strivings. They understand their own domestic strivings. They understand their own landscape in a way that can help them, like I said, grapple the pro prophecy, a suture it to their understanding down here in these streets. When then you go and you put duct tape on the mouths of prophets in a country, you guys, I mean, can you see a brewing, stewing wrath in heaven? C can you see it? Can you see a brewing, stewing, heartening, wrath in heaven in a god who is slow to anger abounding in steadfast love not willing that anybody should perish but that all should come to repent and yet there are people that are acting as barriers to entry to that prospect of repentance it is like the countrymen are not even to be blamed per se for their continued rebellion but rather the individual that has put what do you call this thing uh soundproof borders around the country preventing 
the prophets of that country from prophesying to their country because the country has been made deaf. South Africa cannot then on that day be blamed for rebelling against God in any continuing measure when it has been America to close the ears of South Africans from their own prophecies. When I started out here, before America caught wind of me and decided to just block me, I was growing about 300 to uh, 250 to 300 to 350 subscribers per month. I was growing that many subscribers per month. I was uploading shorts and long form content, etc. My videos got taken up and I was growing like any other YouTube channel. Slow at first, but incrementally inclining, just steadily. I was gradually growing. And by now, if I had not been thwarted, I'd, I would have thousands, thousands of subscribers with some of my content maybe even having perhaps 50,000 views, 20,000 views, 100,000 views. But I certainly would have at a minimum about 5,000 subscribers by now. But I'm still sitting on 900 and something on my biggest channel and the rest, they're all just frozen. It's stagnant. It's just dead, dead, stagnant. Understand that in the beginning of my struggle, in, my, in the beginning of me sharing this work and trying to grow a channel so that I can be okay, all right, I also was actively talking to South Africans, some of whom were my enemies, and they were actively blocking me from growing. I was boasting in Christ saying, he's going to give me my life back, my future back. I'm growing a YouTube channel. Get out of this darkness, all of y'all with your mixing of Christianity with witchcraft. Just stop. And the very people who, me, who, who mocked and jeered at me are now today able to continue to laugh at me. I'm trying to explain to you guys that with any Christian trying to prophesy, with any Christian trying to evangelize, any Christian trying to do anything, we are never ever going to get left alone. There will always be resistance against our cause. Whatever we are doing, there will always be resistance. So you're gonna get the witch that's trying to block you from growing your channel. You're gonna get people bewitching you. You're gonna get people... Um, uh, opposing you like mean horrible comments online stuff like that there will always be resistance but you should be able to grow because god's intention was to make disciples of all nations and that in a crowd indeed there will be resistance but there will also be those who embrace it and with the spiritual war that he has promised us is guaranteed to come into our lives he has also said that we trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us therefore we are guaranteed to win every spiritual war he says that some demons come out only with fasting and praying so when you fast and you pray because you can see that there's some kind of rebe rebellion against you some kind of a chokehold you then conquer on the other side you break through so in my in the beginning of my channel i i, I would grow like maybe like 200 subscribers in perhaps like two two and a half weeks and then all of a sudden my content would freeze like i would upload shorts or long form content and it would go nowhere nobody would look at it i would immediately understand it as spiritual war and i would be prayerful over 24 hours 48 hours sometimes i would be also in a fast above, over and above being prayerful and after like 24 to 48 hours the next content that i would upload it's growing again so i got the attacks i got the witchcraft attacks that froze my channel ever so temporarily and then i was loosed after praying about it and then my content would pick up again and that was going to be a continuing trend that was going to continue to happen because people were going to keep on trying to block my youtube they were going to like literally witches were never going to stop coming at me so i was going to endure a spiritual battle uphill that is very very resisted but nonetheless one that i am obviously winning in because i've been guaranteed to win i've been guaranteed to conquer the same thing is also true with fa with facebook i would upload my reels and like get so many uh followers with each new batch of reels that i would upload and then one day it would just freeze and I would know that it's demonic, it's an attack, it's witchcraft. People are coming at me. 24 hours after praying, 48 hours after praying, maybe three days. It's gone and I'm back to growing again. I endured those peaks and those troughs, those ups and those downs like any other channel that is Christian that is being resisted because I was left alone by social media that is. The platform itself left me to thrive if I want to thrive, flop if I want to flop. Witchcraft was what was coming up against me. Hence why I say that sorcery I saw in the very beginning of my ministry that it was not responsible. It, it, it is not currently responsible for the thing that I'm enduring now, the frozenness that I am enduring right now. Yeah, you need to understand no way, no how. That's not witchcraft because I am a prayer warrior. 
I am always fasted, not always, but like right now I'm currently in a fast and I intend to keep this fast up for a month maybe. I've been doing fasts like that. I've been praying like that. I'm consecrated. I'm very, very seriously sutured to Jesus. Nothing should be able to stand in my grill. So when at this point, I'm not making war with entities. I'm making war with human beings and people have no no reverence for god they have no piety they are it's written in god's word you believe in god you do nothing special even the demons believe and they tremble so demons respond to get out in the name of jesus and they leave so your channel goes back to growing again whatever oppression was sitting on you it stops human beings however you tell them get out of my face and they just don't barge they don't have the same level of reverence for the name of jesus that human that, that, that entities do and so they can sit on your chest even when demons aren't anymore and endure you therefore to just the tyranny of so much abuse oppression and sorrow until god then decides to deal with the human being entities are condemned already they're going to hell at the sake at the great white throne judgment second death it's guaranteed that that's where they're going human beings however have been awarded an opportunity at redemption they can be propitiated for and for those reasons, God is very slow towards uh, to, uh, to anger concerning them, abounding in steadfast love, not willing that they should perish, but that they should all come to repentance. He is forbearing. He is magnanimous towards people. He takes a long time before he, finish the, he finishes a, a, a judgment on them. He opts for mercy over judgment for a very long time. He tarries from effecting judgment because precisely because they don't have to die. Whereas demons are already dead. It's done for. There's no way they can turn back. Human beings, however, can turn back. And that's what God is forbearing co concerning. He is waiting for them to do better. But when then they are threatening the life of a disciple or the lives of disciples, and they're also literally blocking other people from coming to Christ. At some point, the Lord is then going to like basically loose the wrath he's been holding onto and pour it out. The wine press of the wrath of God is like and climbing and climbing. And when it reaches a brim, he will pour it out so as to open the floodgates of heaven's message to whoever will listen and heed. Whoever will listen and heed. When I was starting, I was growing two to three hundred subscribers per month. In one of my channels, because I've got four channels, 80% of those subscribers were South African. 80%. 80%. I know this because sometimes when you get a new subscriber, you get a notification that they've subscribed because they've allowed themselves to be seen or whatever. And it'll tell you their name. And the names were like Tabisa Making Somani or Pinky Vilagazi or Rinelwe like Monachedi. Basically South African names. Swusiso Shabalala. Yeah. Has subscribed to your channel. New subscriber, Swusiso Shabalala, new subscriber, Jabu Mgadi. Yeah. I they were I, I recognized them as South Africans because of their names. And 80% of those notifications had I guess I told you guys, like I said, those uh names. Also, uh what is it? Largely it was black names that I was able to recognize as South African, but sometimes you can tell when a surname is from South Africa, even when it's not black, like Potriter. Like Van Niekerk, like um, uh, Van der Westeisen. Indeed, it could be from the Netherlands. Indeed, it could be, uh, what is this, German. But largely, highly likely, given that you're speaking in English and not German or Dutch, it's highly likely somebody with an Afrikaans surname from this country. Mariki Van Niekerk could be from the Netherlands. Could be, but it's highly likely that they're from South Africa. I was seeing names like those subscribing to me uh seeing names like those subscribing to me and i gauged therefore that i've got a south african audience one of my channels was like that uh my largest one my biggest subscriber base was american uh but the other the other one that i started on the side because i kept starting new youtube channels that's the thing because i noticed i was being shadow banned all over the show um but one of them it, it was largely south africans that were coming through for me the same thing is also true for tiktok but tiktok is not american so we shall move on from that plus uh china does not claim itself to be a christian america does and god's judgment on those who profess to be his and aren't walking in himness uh face greater judgments anyway yeah 
very well cool beans and monotonous so i was effectively what i'm trying to say at this point oh using tiktok let's talk about tiktok right yes tiktok is chinese right but i got a lot of followers who wanted to hear what i have to say initially before i got blocked that was south african what that evidence is is that south africans were prepared to listen to me the fact that i grew so quickly on tiktok and then suddenly stopped as well and also i was growing quite quickly on youtube and suddenly stopped and one of my channels like i said 80 percent of my subscribers were from this country it says that it's not that south africans are disinterested in what i have to say all of them it's not that there is no ear to hear it's not that they don't agree it's not that they don't feel the pain it's not that they don't and they're not enduring what i'm enduring it's not that they can't relate with my story it's not that they also don't feel beleaguered on all sides by labatagati or the situation it's not like that's going that's what's going on it's like they have been told 10 of you came no more than 10 11 of you came no more than 11 50 of you came no more than 50 literally america shut doors to all of my like anyone that could come through and listen to me extra and also caused a severity of underestimation by my existing subscriber base because when a person is going nowhere and nobody's listening to them there is an inclination unfortunately in this fallen human body to undermine them to underestimate people because nobody else is looking at them i personally struggle with that whenever i look at a whenever i click on I, i'm checking out something on youtube if it doesn't have very many views i am inclined and unfortunately it's the wrong thing to do to think it's low quality and so i don't click on it unless of course i'm compelled to click on it and then i watch it anyway and realize oh it's actually really good content it's unfortunate this person is not getting enough views they're undervalued they're underrated but that underrating is literally a matter of perception sometimes people can think that your content is excellent only because you've got so many views or they can think it sucks only because you've got so little views and so i was underestimated and quite severely by like i said my existing base and not only did i get underestimated by them because i'm always lamenting complaining so much about all the spiritual insanity in the country they got fatigued from listening to a person always complaining so some of them i even lost altogether they literally unsubscribed because they were like not trying to hear this crying woman all the time even though the issues in the country were still the issues in the country the conversations that i could have prospered to start i have not been able to start because of america because of america they then unleashed their beastly monster on me that pounced like some strange animal and that beastly animal is not the only beastly animal that can do stuff to me there are other guys that have tried stunts on me that have been obsessive where i'm concerned my ex-boyfriend is one so too is another ex-boyfriend of mine that i did it when i was in christ guys that just pursue a woman into oblivion continuing to follow them around with gunshots but you see it's written in god's word that the wicked are inclined towards evil they just magnify in it when there is no justice in the land when you don't effect justice when you don't do what is right they just get more and more emboldened america is responsible for their little animal because that little animal would have long ago likely moved on with his life if he did not actually think i'm feasible to be grabbed if at all i was able to do what i need to do if i was able to grow anyway and thrive with my life he would have with a broken heart just got out of my face so essentially they blocked even the repentance of their own little rodent they blocked the repentance of their own monster that guy in america if i was able to thrive and grow and do what i do anyway he would have realized that his witchcraft is worthless it's not doing anything for him and he's just obsessing over a woman that he absolutely will never ever get back and he would have just moved he would have forced himself to he would have had no other choice because are you going to keep on throwing witchcraft spells wasting all those dollars on on something that's not working no he would not have carried on he would not have carried on but today I keep hearing on a Lupina Ilya Mary J. Blige and I can't live without you, baby. I've been waiting, I'll be waiting for you when you get home. Cause he thinks that the day's gonna come when I get home, when I go to him, when I run to him, because I have no support, I have no respect, I have no one having my back. He thinks that day's gonna arrive based on his observation of me going nowhere. He comes to my channel and sees me frozen. And he tells himself one day she's gonna get exhausted from suffering or she will eventually commit suicide. Something is going to give. That American man has those sentiments because of his own country that has made a decision that i am going to go nowhere and from what the lord has shown me i'm not the only one i'm not the only content creator on the earth that is trying to speak to god's people that america is actively blocking from going anywhere they have literally set on our chests they don't want there being an increase of christians online or truth 
channels online and so they are thwarting the message of peace which is why i'm not hearing argentinian prophecy which is why i'm not hearing brazilian prophecy which is why i'm not hearing mexican prophecy which is why i'm not hearing south african prophecy from other south african prophets which is why i am not hearing Tswana prophecy ugandan prophecy i'm not hearing anything coming from zimbabwe i am not hearing what everybody what the body of christ in the world is saying to their countries and i'm interested i want to know it would be great to establish a network online of people that have been given prophetic giftings or dreams and visions where we can basically just kind of bang, uh, band with each other and agree on where we find ourselves in the prophetic timeline given that these are the challenges in our individual countries like a lot of times I, I get confused and am uncertain as to whether or not it's really truly the last well it is the last days but as in last 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 days last seconds i am not sure because a lot of the information i am receiving about what's going on in the world is largely from america it's like they are falling apart in a way that we can see because it's the news that is being punted and shoved down everybody's throat it's understanding we're all awarded very automatically without having to search too hard for it but i don't know what's truly going on other than what's being covered by mainstream media which is untrustworthy i don't know what's truly going on in ghana in nigeria i don't know what's truly going on in much of south america in australia in canada i don't know what's actually happening on the ground i don't know what those people are prophesying to their own countries i and again i don't know what what, what are the core issues in those nations because i'm not i'm not hearing the vantage point of people living in those countries sharing their spiritual battles so as to gauge really truly are we in the great apostasy or is it just america that's falling are we really truly where it is yeah it, yeah of course the powder cake in israel in in the middle east that helps it is the biggest biggest like it's basically the true north of a compass it really helps to see what's happening in the middle east but if what's happening in the middle east is also not tied to everything else that is cataclysmic across the world it can't be the end because the middle east has always been a powder cake it's i mean that's why the whole saying of peace in the middle east it came from it, it, it comes from the fact that there's always been trouble in that region so i need to be able to map trouble in that region with everything else happening across the world and if i can get validation that every country is like south africa then yo it's over we're done for like we're going home but i'm not getting that validation I'm actually thinking that if there are other cushier parts and uh, other places to live that are slightly more cushy in Africa. But if then I would move, for instance, to I could say big, uh, Angola and this is happening in Angola, I'd be like, whoa, man, I left South Africa, I left this rubbish in South Africa and I'm facing it in Angola. I thoroughly want to leave South Africa, but I don't even know where to because I'm not getting enough information, understanding about the spiritual climate of countries in the world that are Christian. I, I don't know what's happening. I do not know what's going on there to a point where I can basically determine that this is where I'm moving to. This is where I want to go, where it is that it's going to be slightly better for me as a Christian. I would know if prophets were allowed to prophesy. I would know if they were, if their content was being proliferated, if the algorithms were pushing them, I would know what prophets in Jamaica are saying. I would know what prophets in Haiti are saying. I would know. You get my point. Madagascar. I would know, but I don't. Because America is pushing their own people only at the expense, Christians that is, at the expense of all the people on whom God has poured out his spirit that they might prophesy dream dreams and share visions. He has done this to the globe, but we are getting one vantage point. It is skewed, it has astigmatism, and it therefore makes it impossible for us to truly gauge what's truly going on. We cannot get the bigger picture accurately and map it back to the Middle East appropriately. And so we're in the dark because where else are we going to share all this information if not on social media? How else are we going to know? How else are we going to exchange notes if not on social media, guys? How? If not on social media, how else are we going to exchange notes? The thing that's happening in South Africa, I am certain there are prophets across the world that have been given dreams and visions about South Africa, the state of the land, but we can't get access to them as South Africans. And what's sad is that even within the country, South Africans cannot speak to South Africans. We can't speak to our own countrymen. We can't hear what other people have to say about us unless they're sitting in America. Unless it is a prophecy over South Africa by an American content creator, then only we get to know. But if somebody gets a dream about the state of Nigeria sitting in Angola, when are they going to find out on YouTube? Come on, somebody tell me. When are they going to find out? When? It appears never. There are more of us buried than is absolutely necessary and God sees he is omnipresent. He sees how many of these prophecies have been smothered by those who have imprisoned content creators that want to share the message of God using this global platform. 
he has seen how many of us have been put in little solitary confinement uh, like what is a slot solitary confinement soundproof rooms that make it impossible for us to speak to our countrymen until our sentiment about our country even changes i've been irritated with south africa for a very long amount of time but i've graduated to a point where i flat out hate it now i just want to get out because i feel ignored and disregarded by people i keep on saying the same things to however i have memory of a time when i would upload something on tiktok and i would get a, a few like quite a few followers from just one upload from just one upload, TikTok was actually quite fast in comparison to YouTube, the way it was growing. There was a time when I would upload a short and I would get a thousand, two thousand, three thousand views with like a couple of hundred likes, a couple of tens of likes in the beginning when I was growing. Now I can literally upload four shorts and all of them will have zero views after two weeks. Nobody's looking at it. literally absolutely nobody. Zero, zero. Today I wanted to do shorts. But I was like, for what? What's the point? Because the, th the thing about shorts is in order for them to be really super engaging, there's quite a lot of editing involved therein. I have to be careful to make sure that I extract uh, pauses, silences, and add music, and add maybe even special effects using CapCut, etc. Just to make them really pow and stick out. But like the effort that I put in, if I'm going to be spending one hour editing a short, and then it gets no views, I have, like the, the, it just disincentivizes me from continuing to do that work. I've got so many shorts. Like if you go to my shorts feed on YouTube, They've separated now long form content from shorts. If you go to my shorts feed, you will see I've literally got hundreds of shorts, hundreds, if not thousands. And there are others that have got zero views, zero views, zero views, zero views, zero views, zero views, zero views. just a zero, 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 zero. It's like, how does a short get not even one view? It is under a minute for crying out loud. Somebody ought to have just watched it at least once. It tells me that they were not even put in the shorts feed because that's the thing about the shorts feed as well. If you have watched shorts from a PC or even from your cell phone device, you can you scroll up like that. You scroll and then you watch, you scroll, you watch. That one scroll, even if you, you lingered there for just like two seconds and moved away, it counts as a view. But however, with a uh, view per minute, whatever, is it called CPU? That is very, very low because they did not linger on it. But nonetheless, it, it, it counts as a view at all. If somebody scrolls, sees it, and moves on, it counts as a view. So for me to get zero views, evidences that YouTube has done something to my shorts and also Facebook to make sure that they don't even get viewed at all. Like at all. Making sure that they don't even get viewed even in the slightest. So therefore, nobody likes, nobody shares, nobody comments. Well, I mean, I've blocked comments. But I only blocked comments because I went frozen silent. I used to get a combination of good comments and bad ones. But now with this situation, I'm literally facing the danger of just being harassed by someone in the comment section that's the only one looking at my work while there's nobody saying anything positive. Like they, I have no incentive to open comments, absolutely none. Because I'm so badly shadow banned. And who's done that? The US of A. Mind you, America did not just do that to me on social media audio, audio visual platforms. It did that on written platforms. I have got a blog uh, on WordPress, an American platform where I have written laborious articles, lots and lots of them. I've stopped writing, literally. They are blocking my talents. They're blocking me from walking in them. I stopped writing because I got to choose what to do. Am I going to do videos? Am I going to write? If at all. I had motivation and I was incentivized to keep writing. I would do both. I would write in my blog and I would do videos on YouTube, but I'm not getting viewed on YouTube. I am not getting read my con my articles I'm not, I'm not i'm not being read in my blog and so for those reasons i gotta choose what i do so that i have something that i'm doing but i've reduced the amount of work that i do because there is no there is there's no incentive like like a a thankless job or an unpaid job like just working for free nobody's reading nobody's liking nobody's commenting nobody is like proper in the beginning of me starting my blog my wordpress blog every article that i would write i would add them i would get like a traffic of at least 200 people at least and this was in 2012 one year after getting born again i opened that blog i started it and i would get about 200 views per article in the very beginning with a couple of likes and it kept on growing increasing increasing the vol the the, the numbers of people that ultimately followed me and then i stopped writing in my blog because i went i just disappeared all online all, altogether um and i was frozen at that stage on 250 followers of my blog and i've ever since i came back i have only grown maybe like five new followers despite writing all those articles in the latter years like in other words in like 2022 2021 yeah 2023 
only five new followers and my articles are long it takes a lot more out of me when i write because i not only i have to do a first draft i have to edit it when i upload it i have to add like um, imagery photos and whatnot it, there's just a way that i write yeah, and there's a way that i seal my message altogether it can take me um like a whole day and a half no rest at all for me to finally get something up right and so therefore just the amount of work that it is involved therein is just too exhausting whereas with doing videos i am content with having ums and oohs in my content without editing them out you can't just leave ums and oohs and mistakes like those when you're written because it just looks sloppy i also have got automatic um sound detection so i can remove silences every so often using uh, automation just ubiquitously do the work all of it in one batch so it doesn't take that much of my time once i've recorded a video like the editing is something that happens quite automatically I, there is no automation of write of written content there's no automate so because of the just the sheer amount of editing involved in writing i've literally stopped writing because wordpress shadow banned me wordpress shadow banned me it prevent like with wordpress i was especially mad i was especially angry because i actually bought a paid plan to get a domain name and still within that paid plan I was still shadow banned i've already communicated these issues in the past before i've spoken about it so really we're not going to labor so uh, i can't even speak to people in a, my written word i cannot speak to people in my spoken word i cannot speak to people anywhere on an american platform and they are the ones that hold most of the world's social media platforms that keep all of us connected the biggest ones anyway that should be proliferating the gospel and god gave america all that because they used to love him once so really it was the best environment to put all these platforms in to share the gospel in the world because the country did not persecute christians it loved christianity it was in and of itself christian and so it was the best environment from where to give the gospel message america so it gave america basically media dominance it did he did he gave america media dominance and then they did this they decided that with their dominance they're gonna go and close the mouth of god across the world america has silenced prophets it has silenced evangelists it has silenced people that are not in america and so i can't even speak to south africans from my country because i'm not going to get to as many south africans just going to the street as i would if they just happened upon my my, my uh youtube channel my facebook page that that's how i would get, reach south africans by now i would likely even be restored to some kind of fellowship with brethren because i would have found them online and then fellowship with them personally physically because i had a hard time finding a church mina in this country due to you know brick and mortar structures being unreliable but individuals that you can trust that you fellowship with that you end up trusting you can make a decision to meet in a bible study weekly in your houses without having to go to an actual church because i did they're not trustworthy these churches i might have been able to find something like that and so therefore be able to gather with saints assemble with them without having to go to an actual church like a brick and mortar like sunday service with the pastor and everything they are no longer trustworthy is the apostasy but five or ten people that i meet with weekly maybe even twice a week that would have been good enough that's how the early church started in houses i might have had something like that going for myself i might have gained myself garnered for myself that kind of support but america made sure that i don't go anywhere i don't grow and so i can't even meet christians online that are in my country that i trust christians that i trust because don't come tell me about all of these lukewarm randos it's like the only place we can find each other is online because the the sheep have been scattered do you understand so the easiest way to find each other is literally online and if we're in the same geographical location great we can meet for coffee but if we're not i guess then we'll do a zoom call or a uh, a facebook call or a um facetime or whatever we'll do a, a global a, a chat on the email type establishment thing yeah we we could therefore reassemble again with brethren those of us that are sheep that have been scattered but america has made sure that i can't do that it has literally isolated me and kept me away from my brethren it has done that it has made me feel like there isn't a single Christian in sight in South Africa. Like it's a tumbleweed in J. Not even one. No one in Cape Town. No one in Durban. No one in Bumalanga. No one in Limpopo. There is no one in Nelspreet. No one in Northwest. No one in Gauteng. Just me, Karabo, alone. Except that is like, of course, heresy from here to Timbuktu. The US of A has done just that. It has literally achieved such a feat as that. It has done that. It has prevented me from speaking to my brethren and from them speaking to me back. It has taken away my fellowship and has proliferated the agenda of people who aren't even saved it has proliferated the agenda of witches online i don't know any south african christian youtube channel of a person that god has not told me get out they're not mine the lord has led like literally there were there were these two south africans that i followed one guy one girl and i kept on watching them to hear their vantage point as to what's going on in the country and god was like you're wasting your time get out 
none of them know me they're witches they're actively practicing sorcery while having youtube channels that's why america has left them to thrive that's why you found them that's why you found them online you found them because it's only those that aren't of me that they keep on proliferating but my actual servants they have done of them what they did to Micaiah. They have buried them in dungeons, they've put them in prison and then fed them meager portions of bread and water. They have refused to let their YouTube channels grow. So true prophecy is not being prophesied. The true word of God is not being spoken. True visions and dreams are not being shared. And so the body of Christ is literally blind from the true spiritual state of the world. And as a result, there is much sleep in the land. People are drowsy because they don't see the dire straits that their countries are in. They are, I want to get my, my bride ready. But they are struggling to get ready because of America. My bride is struggling to get ready because of the US of A. Literally single-handedly. Because my prophets have been buried by America. They cannot speak. They cannot reach people. They're struggling. Only one or two have a voice here and there. That have slipped through the cracks. But the large majority of them are not being listened to. Because America has shadow banned the living daylights out of the body of Christ. Across the world. So I mean when you block people from entering the kingdom of heaven. And God is trying to gather his bride that they might go with him in the rapture. He's not going to just merely throw them into a tribulation. When if they had heard prior to the tribulation, they would have repented. He's going to take whatever is blocking the, the ears that's putting wax in the ears of the global citizenship. He's going to take that out of the way and then speak to people. And then only if people reject him, despite them hearing watch men and women across the world, then only will he rapture the body of Christ because nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody wants to listen to Jesus on high. It is an epidemic, it's an issue. And from what the Lord showed me, it's going to result in American refugees scattered across the world because something cataclysmic is going to happen to America that's going to make it uninhabitable. I would imagine it's a war. I've gotten a dream in the past of Manhattan Island being nuked. Manhattan Island. That island in Lauren Hill's music video. Dun, 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 dun. Ah. I found out that Manhattan is in New York. I was told this even before I came upon that information. And there are so many people who have prophesied that they have dreamed about New York getting nuked, bombed. Mm -hmm. Well, of me in particular, I saw that part that nuke landing in Manhattan on the island, completely like laying it waste, obliterating it completely like it was gone. All of it, that island. Mm. I only saw Manhattan, but I there was a, a person that prophesied in a comment section recently that said that she saw a magnitude 9.0 earthquake swallowing celebrities whole at the grammys the grammys came and went and no such thing happened and i was like maybe that prophecy is not true is it really not true or was that either metaphoric god showing what he's about to do to celebrities take them all in one sitting where they're at the grammys or that it's gonna happen just not in 2023 four sorry just not in 2024 guys the the earthquake that decimated turkey with those 38,000 deaths was a magnitude 7 point something. So I mean a 9.0. What in the world is that? I believe that prophecy. But like I said, grab it with a pinch of salt. See if it comes to pass. But that was prophesied by who? An American in an American comment section under an American video. That's how I found out about it. I cannot hear from anybody other than Americans. And that is problematic. It's problematic. So what I'm seeing with America being like with, with Americans being refugees across the world all i can conclude from that is oh the reason why you're refugees is because there's war in your country something has made your country uninhabitable and so you're scattering and you're fleeing to other countries everywhere else around and you are also expecting from what i saw in my dream everybody to treat you well when you come in as a refugee but the lord showed me american refugees are about to endure some of the worst treatment in the world because of how they are so xenophobic against people that come into their country this is not me speaking it's what the lord showed me that because of american xenophobia when then they want to flee to other countries the tables are going to turn and people are going to treat them really badly across the world they're going to treat them badly they're going to have a hard time especially in neighboring countries like mexico the south american countries are gonna spit on their shoes i would imagine they're probably better off in africa than in south america because the south americans are going to give them a taste of their own medicine from what i saw this issue with the the border crisis or texas right now while i agree with conservatives there that borders should not just be yawning open i'm not anti-immigration or anything like that but some people without even understanding the true politics of a situation just but a lot of vitriol there was a, a video that i was watching 
uh, by some young man in America, a black guy who is a conservative who does rap. And he was rapping about the, 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 the border crisis there in Texas and his language, guys, the way that he spoke. He was not politically correct. He was not being, he was not being, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like he was not being reasonable or rational in uh, expositing or unpacking the situation at hand. The nature of the situation, that young man was not speaking about it in a way that would award him respectability. He was just rude. He was just mean. He was speaking about how all of these uh, foreigners need to get the F out. Get the F out. Get get the F out. It's not your country. Get, we don't want you here. Get the F out. And I'm like, yo, dude, not everybody that crosses, crosses a border is, first of all, illegal. And secondly, um, a snare to the U.S. And every country has got immigrants that benefit it in one shape or form or another. The African diaspora, a lot of it is in America and a lot of it is in Europe, etc. And when you treat them like trash, they're going to be the ones when you're out here queuing at their borders saying to you, get the F out, get the F out. I could not listen to the rest of that. I only listened to like the first minute. It was like a three minute long video because I could not take the swearing in my stride. But all I could think was I'm South African and I don't disagree with Governor Abbott. I don't disagree with the conservative states standing for texas because we can't i mean just to let borders bleed like people just flood in that is wrong so here it is that i'm sitting all the way in south africa and i agree that it's irresponsible what joe biden is doing with the border there in texas you are changing my sentiment you are changing my sentiment i agree because immigration in and of itself is not problematic just make sure that you are uh what is this not a uh, healthy but legal let it be orderly for crying out loud let the situation be orderly so i absolutely agree that open borders that are just disorderly is problematic i agree even in my own country there is an issue of that nature i agree like absolutely 100 percent. but then you're changing my sentiment because of how rude you are to everyone coming from the outside and being an african knowing how badly sometimes the diaspora is treated in america i'm just like you're literally speaking about people that got my ethnicity that come from my continent and you're telling us to get the f out when y'all are going to be needing to come to live in our countries you you literally the tables will at some point turn so i'm just sharing this message right now because i believe the lord is showing me that americans are about to experience what it's like to be an american in a world that has pedestaled you elevated you put you on a pinnacle and you being arrogant with your position because everybody else in the world is about to be arrogant against them. They're about to get a taste of their own medicine. They're going to be humbled very unfortunately and quite quickly. It's written in God's word that those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. We prayed for the American church, but from what the Lord showed me, uh, it's small. It's small. The real, real, real brethren are like outnumbered violently and charlatans are running the show in the Christian circles in America. In other words, people who aren't even really God's servants, they're compromised, they've settled, they've done wickedness, they are living double lives. They're the ones with these YouTube channels where they're talking to brethren like, like they're children of God. And they're going to find out the hard way that they were not even truly sent by God, but they went anyway. Not all of them, of course. Like there are people that we follow that we love that are of God. And those that are indeed prophesying this very same thing that I'm saying about their own country. But there is also quite a, a handsome percentage of Americans american christians that aren't the real deal that are unfortunately getting listened to or heard at the expense of the real deal and god is literally about to go and unravel all that he's about to put a crater in the center of all that he's about to neutralize all of that so i mean y'all <laughs> all i can say is repent god is giving you time the lord has shown me there's about to be a refugee flood from america and that flood is going to be met with global persecution xenophobically Americans aren't used to being xenophobically treated because everywhere they go they're loved but when they lose their might as a country they're going to be despised and it's unfortunate because indeed the scriptures say that nobody likes a poor man everybody despises a poor man but when a person is, is filled with gold they've got many friends America is currently filled with gold and it's got many friends but when she becomes poor she's going to be despised so I mean the only advice that I can give to Americans is get out before that flood of refugees becomes the status quo move to other countries 
live there establish solid friendships with people so that you can be protected from being a persecuted american when so many americans are busy breaking borders of other countries trying to come in it's going to happen so this guy from america that has been persecuting the living daylights out of me i've been asking god father why under heaven have you allowed this menace to continue in this fashion because he's breaking me you said that you're going to end him you said you're going to kill him for hurting me why is he still alive why is he still able to cast spells and god was like you're not looking at the bigger picture this man is just one american out of many he's doing wicked deeds in america one among many such wicked deeds he's hurting africans he's hurting people from other continents one among many there are a lot of them doing these things and when i judge them i'm going to judge them ubiquitously all of them all in one sitting and so he's going to fall when all the other dominoes fall it's not that i've ignored you it's that i've been patient with america but when i crash that situation down that man is going to fall with all the rest of the boulders that's what's been going on so i come here then daily and i record these messages and i share my heart because god has basically given me comfort that i'm not being ignored he's just being patient in particular with the us and that's why i'm in this position that's why my youtube channel is going nowhere that's why Khotozi, he has shown me that once the us crashes and burns all of a sudden there's not going to be monitoring not much anyway there's going to be a um a, a season of not being able to concentrate on what youtube channels are saying or doing because there's going to be so much calamity that it's going to be priority 29 to focus on media censorship and during that time youtube channels are going to suddenly skyrocket they're gonna grow like by massive subscriber numbers such that by the time another country takes on the reins of social media to censor it and smother it and quieten the word by the time that happens so many people will already have grown their channels to like 50,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers. And once you have that many subscribers, you cannot be shadow banned to into oblivion like me. My kind of shadow banning is only succeeding because I was so small at the time when they decided to stop me all of a sudden. But if I was 100,000 subscribers big or even 50,000, I would every single day be getting at a minimum about 15,000 views per video. But I'm not there. I, I didn't even get I didn't even get to crack past a, 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 a thousand subscribers on any of my channels. So when I'm sitting on such low numbers, understand only one or two people see me, only one or three people see me, and it's gonna stay that way all the way up until America, as a conglomerate, is judged. And upon it being judged, I will then be relieved. My chest will, whatever is sitting on it, will get off, and I will grow, grow, grow until likely Europe takes social media up it basically the, the the controls move to europe and then they will start to persecute us again but there's going to be a, a, a season from what i saw uh, of uh, like relief like literally media relief purely because america crashed and burned i don't know how this is going to happen all i know is that it it can't be far and again i'm not with, willing bad for america my desire is that they should repent but like it appears unlikely that they will given how rebellious they currently are like i said even some of the conservatives have annoyed god so it's not even about conservatives versus liberals that's a 50 50 split if it was 50 50 indeed that which is righteous in the u.s god would have spared it but it's not the numbers are far more abysmal of who is righteous in that space so look out guys for what's going to happen in america i'm praying that they should repent do better but I like it, like God just told me this morning that there's go, there's about to be a, a flood of refugees from America to our countries. I'm out here trying to leave South Africa. Americans gonna be out here trying to come in. That's all I'm saying. It's prophecy. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Bye.